Okay, so for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be creating this material on a sphere. I'll just go out of my camera. I've got three area lights in the scene. Lighting is extremely important whenever you're creating materials. But if you check the description or the top comment, you can go ahead and download the studio setup so that you can follow along without any issues. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start by going to Create, Shader, Cinema 40 Octane, Octane Material, drag and drop that onto my sphere, go to my plugins and open up my Live Viewer. I'm just going to make this a bit smaller and I'm going to send my scene over to the Live Viewer so we can see all of our changes being made over here. And for this scene, I'm actually going to disable the left and the right light in the scene. So there's just an angled overhead light. And then I'm just going to double click on here to open up the Octane Material and then open up the Node Editor. Let's go ahead and select our Octane material, go to basic and change the material type to glossy so that we get access to the specular as well. Okay, so our Octane material is ready and we're good to go. Okay, so on the left hand side, everything that's listed as green over here is a generator. So we're going to be using the turbulence generator and generators basically generate different patterns and effects for your material. So just drag and drop the turbulence onto your shader tree. And this is going to be the basis for creating some variation in the waviness of our lines. Now go ahead and connect the turbulence to diffuse and you can see the turbulence pattern being applied onto our sphere. But to actually get this to look like those wavy lines, we need to use another generator node. So we're going to be using the sine wave node. Drag and drop it onto this line, you'll see it turns orange. As soon as I let go, it automatically connects that for me. So the sine wave node is a fantastic way to create various banding or striped patterns. So if you're trying to create sand dunes or these wavy lines or even a watermelon texture, the sine wave node allows you to do that. So it really comes in handy. So by default the type of sine wave is on sine wave and I want to leave it on that. You can play around with the triangle and saw wave and see the results you get but we want to leave this on sine wave and then I want to click on transform. So it's automatically going to create a transform node for me that's connected to the sine wave. And then over here I want to make sure this is ticked. It's going to do a uniform scale and I want to scale this down to actually get the wavy pattern. So I'm going to put this on a predetermined value of 0.01 and press enter. And there we go, we've automatically got these wavy lines. So the actual variation of these wavy lines is being driven by this turbulence. If I select the turbulence, and for instance, if I bring down this omega value, the omega value ba basically adds more detail, which is adding more of this waviness to these lines. If I decrease this omega value, you can see that the lines over here, let me just make this a little bit bigger. You can see that our lines will still have the waviness applied to them, but it just reduces the amount of wavy lines that's present on a single line. And that's just by controlling this omega value. So I want to bring that back to the default value, which is 0 0.5. And just to add to that, let's say if you wanted completely straight lines, while you've got turbulence selected, just bring the power down to zero and you'll get straight lines. But I'm going to undo that because we are creating a wavy line material. Right, so now it's time to start adding some color onto our uh, material. I'm just going to make this uh, live view a little bit smaller. So to do that, we'll be using a mapping node. So everything that's maroon is a mapping node, and we're going to use the gradient mapping node. So just drag and drop that over here, and it's automatically going to connect that. Now if I select that, you can see we've got our gradient slider. So you have complete creative freedom over here. You can use whatever colors you want, or you can use the exact same colors I'm using. I'm going to be using three of these color pickers. So if I left click over here, it will automatically create another color picker. And if I uh, click and drag that down, it removes it. Okay, but I'm going to add that back. And let me just clamp this a little bit closer. So you can see, depending on how close it's clamped, it's also going to determine how these colors are actually going to look on the material. So I'm going to make this value like an orange. Okay, then I've got these black lines that are going to be present over here. Okay, so like I said, you can use whatever colors you want. I might adjust these colors later, but just to show you right now, these are the colors I'm going for. I might make this a little bit darker with these lines. And you can see, depending on where it's clamped, it truly gives you a, a different look and feel with the material. So play around with the clamping value and the overall uh, colors. And if you didn't notice already, this is also a great way to control the distance between these lines. You can see if I clamp this value all the way back 
and even bring this closer, it's basically making that separation between these lines or that distance a lot shorter. So yeah, definitely play around with this until you get the overall look and feel that you're going for. Okay, so let's add some more detail onto our material. You'll notice that there's a really strong a reflective highlight on here from the specular. And I want to definitely adjust that because right now I really don't like how that looks. So I'm just going to make my live view a bit smaller. And I'm just going to move these nodes up a little bit as well. So I'm going to grab the turbulence. Just hold on shift. So I'm going to select the turbulence, the sine wave and the transform. Ho hold on control and just click and drag drag this down to duplicate it. So I'm basically going to be using the exact same values over here and I'm going to be connecting this into the specular, the roughness and a part of this pattern is even going to be used in the bump. Alright, so we're going to be using another uh, mapping node which is going to be the mix node. Drag and drop that over here. So a mix node allows you to blend two textures together and you can control the overall amount. So I'm going to be connecting this sine wave to the texture one and then this value is going to be controlling both the specular and my roughness. Now you'll see as soon as that's connected to the roughness, we get a much more smoother result over here that's been driven by the turbulence and the sine wave. So we no longer have that very strong reflective highlight. This looks a little bit more uniform and in my opinion looks a lot better. Okay, so I want to add some additional detail and variation uh, to this mix texture as well. So we're going to be using a, a generator node which is called noise and I'm going to connect this to texture 2. So you can select the noise and I'm going to leave everything default here. By default it's on Perlin and all of these values will remain the same. So the reason why I'm doing this, if I go to my mi mix texture over here, Okay, let's just send that back to the live viewer. By default, it's on a value of 50%, so a 50% mixture between the turbulence and the noise. But by doing this, you'll see when I actually connect the bump later on, I'll be able to control how much of this noise I want to be visible by dragging the slider in this direction and how much of this turbulence I want to be visible. It'll make a little bit more sense when we actually connect uh, some of these nodes to the bump. So for now, let me just put that back on 0 0.5 and press enter. Now I want to add a, another mix texture node. So this is really cool and it's a great way of creating complex materials because these two have already been blended together with this mix texture. But now I can mix this mixture in another mix texture node. So I'm going to connect that to texture one. And as soon as I connect this to the bump, you can see it adds like another dimension uh, to this material. It almost looks like these lines have been extruded or embossed on our material over here. So I think this just adds some really nice additional detail to our material instead of it just being completely uh, flat lines. You'll see if I go ahead and remove the bump. I think these lines look a little bit too, too simple. But it depends on the overall aesthetic you're going for. But I'm going to connect that to bump again. There we go. Alright, so now I want to go ahead and add an additional noise generator and I want to connect this to texture 2. So this is just going to break up the surface of our bump material here a little bit more. Just going to add additional detail. Now I'm going to select that noise and I'm going to change the type to chips and then on the omega I'm going to put it on a value of 0 0.248 and then I want to click on transform. That's going to create a transform node for me. Okay, and then I want to put the value for the scale on the X, Y, and Z on 0 0.01 and press enter. Okay, so now if I increase this, you can see that there's an additional layer of bump that has been applied on here. But right now it's a little bit too much. And this is where the power of this mix texture node is going to come in handy. So I can select the mix texture and I want to bring this value down quite a bit. So I want to put it on... Let's see, maybe 0 0.03. So now I'm creating a really nice blend between the turbulence and just adding a subtle amount of this noise. You can see it here in between the cracks. So it's like these really small dotted uh, surface imperfection that just breaks up the surface of the material a little bit more, which I think looks pretty cool. And just one last thing, just to showcase that mix texture from earlier, because I did say it would make sense once this is connected to the bump. If I select that, 
right and i bring our value because right now it's on 50 percent which i consider to be a really good blend but if i bring this all the way to zero you can see the effect over here becomes a lot more predominant we still have the surface imperfection over here but it's not that visible uh, not really that much visible on the cracks but if i put this all the way up to one you can see these lines become flat but we still have the surface imperfection so it truly really depends on what type of overall aesthetic or look and feel that you're trying to achieve but for me personally putting this on 0 0.5 creates a really nice blend between those two okay so there we go we've created our wavy lines pattern remember with a procedural material your material is never final you can always go back and adjust anything even with the turbulence if i go ahead and create a projection node over here i'm just showing you just for fun and i change this projection to something like xyz it gives me like a completely crazy and different effect. So if you even play, play around with the different texture projection nodes, you'll also get different effects. And this is also a great way to create like a watermelon texture by changing the texture projection node to XYZ to UVW. But again, this tutorial is focused on creating these wavy lines. And I've showed you how to do that from start to finish. So I hope this has been really useful and that you got a nice introduction to the node editor in Octane Render so you can see just how powerful it is. All right, so stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials on this channel. I truly appreciate the support and goodbye.